Okay, you guys. Um, I am going to actually start on the next book of uh, Corinthians. So it'll be Second Corinthians, and um, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe what I'm reading here. So I'm going to cross reference it with an open Bible with these these Bible verses that I put into the the videos that I make. I'm going to cross reference at least this first portion of it with an open 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 Bible um discussion of various Bible verses on what exactly the Bible says about these Pharisees because this is exactly what we're seeing out here and uh, I was I was actually shocked because I said Holy Spirit what is the next book that I should try to do a Bible study on and he led me to the second Corinthians and what is the first thing it says in here second Corinthians chapter 1 Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother to the church of God in Corinth, together with all of his holy people throughout Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to the God of all comfort. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Can you imagine? So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. And this is what this is what led me to what I'm about to read you. You know, it's it's um it's one thing you expect that unbelievers would attack you because they don't believe the same way that, that you believe. Um, it's something else to have Christians themselves attack you constantly and that is what the pharisee definition is under the pharisees themselves were attacking jesus throughout his entire ministry so as as they all want to want to turn around and call me a religious person because because i keep calling them pharisees no they are exactly pharisees and um I, I exactly have transcended religion, so their their lunacy does not does not affect me anyway whatsoever. But they are in fact the true definition of Pharisee, and I guess this is why the Holy Spirit has led me here. So so let me read that again, and I'm going to read it into the point where it talks about sharing the love of God, the love of Christ with those who are hurting which is exactly what these pharisees are not doing they're not able to do so it's uh, verse three starts praise be to god and the father of our lord jesus christ the father of compassion and the god of all comfort who comforts us all in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from god for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, we also are, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Though we will all be persecuted, those of us who speak God's total truth and, and we don't conform it to the world, we, we don't start shooting out these prosperity gospels out here. We don't, we don't conform or, 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 What's the word I want? Switch up God's word to suit what we want out of life. Okay? No, we speak total truth of what is in the Bible. So we will be persecuted for that, which you're seeing happening right now. So, although we will share in Christ's... What did he say? For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. As you saw in my first video, the second I started going inside to the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, I was overwhelmed from the top of my head down with the peace and the love of God. 
So when, when we when we go inside to the Holy Spirit, this is what happens. We abound in the love of Christ. And so if we you've ever experienced that, it's easy when you are not in the midst of a trial to to um to share that information and it, and it be genuine from your heart to tell people that when they when they try to do things on their own this is when this is when the enemy attacks because we're weak when we're on our own we need the holy spirit we need jesus to guide us through this stuff and and to literally for the holy spirit and jesus to be fighting in the spiritual realm these demons and binding them to keep them away from us we can't do that we need the holy spirit and jesus to do that okay that's why you saw that peace just overflow on me. And it, it's what allows me to, to get back on here and be teaching in a very calm state. So you understand that I'm not just speaking words here. I, I literally walk the talk. Okay? And understand that I, I, I have no shame in anything that I lose my temper and uh, I fall short. As I say... There's, there's not one person that's been perfect on this planet except Jesus. And until we take our last breath, we will be deepening into the Holy Spirit. Until we take our last breath. So this is why. Should, should we ever, ever believe that we're better than anybody else? No. So does anybody have a right to brutally attack us and abuse us constantly like this? To believe that they are better than anybody else? To actually say that some Christians are bringing some new age techniques into Christianity. What is this garbage? What is this garbage? Instead of being abusive and saying that Christians are bringing new age stuff into Christianity. The message should be how Christians should be spreading the love of Jesus into the lost people of the new age community and the occult. That should be the message. It should be coming from a positive place, not an abusive place, to abuse the lost, which is what these abusers do constantly. That's how you know they're Pharisees. So, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. Okay? So I've always been one out here to be the guinea pig, to let you see the process as it really is. Not playing any games, not putting any, uh, any mask on here, not saying I'm something I'm not. But to let you see the process as it's happening, which I just did in my video where I was getting so angry and then all of a sudden I stopped myself and I went inside to the Holy Spirit and I started praying to the Father. And you saw the peace that overcame me. Okay? And so here I am back out here helping you guys. This is what happens. This is the strength that we get from the Holy Spirit, from Father God, from Jesus Christ through times of trouble and, and why I have not had a massive nervous breakdown through all of this abuse that I have endured here for so long and it has never let up. How have I not fallen apart? It's because I am deep within the Trinity and every word I speak is truth. These people out here are, are, are not on my wavelength, so they have no clue. They have no clue. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comforts. You see, you... you, you it's not right that anyone who calls himself a Christian 
would ever attack another Christian at all, period. Never attack another Christian. But to attack a Christian that is being attacked by people of the world. And you can tell a predator behavior when you see it. And that's what these false pseudo-Christian pastors are doing. They're predators. And when they, they think they see a floundering prey, that's when they attack. All of them, that's when they attack. You would not expect a Christian to behave in such a manner. Especially not someone who calls himself a pastor. Never. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the, pro in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Because we are truly walking with God, it, it doesn't mean that we don't have down days. Um, understand the enemy is attacking us mercilessly. Unbelievers are attacking and, and always keep in your mind that any attack that is coming from anywhere is literally coming from the spirit realm. So these, these demons have inhabited the forms of these people who are attacking me, which is why I ask Father God to bind these demons in these people. Okay. It's, it's, it's not these people that are attacking me. It's, it's, it's the demons from the spirit world that are attacking me mercilessly. The greater the attack, the greater the calling. And you all have to truly understand what I'm saying here. Don't ever let the enemy lie to you and believe that you're being attacked because you're a sinner and you're no good. The en if you were a sinner and no good, the enemy would not be attacking you because he already had you. So you have to understand why you're being attacked. Okay? Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such deadly peril and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause right here and now I'm going to go to the uh, open Bible verses. So what does the Bible say about Pharisees? We all need to really understand this. Matthew 23, 1 to 39. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, these scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So practice and observe whatever they tell you. When they preach the gospel to you, when they teach the gospel to you, listen intently because they have studied the gospel. They know the Bible. They know the Bible. Listen to what they tell you, but don't do as they do because they are not living the Bible. They're preaching the Bible, but they're not living the Bible. So practice and observe whatever they tell you, but not what they do. There you go. For they preach, but do not practice. There you go. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. Amen, brother. This is exactly what these people are doing to me. They all they do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. So they want everyone to um, give them special treatment and special reference as being a pastor, being an apostle, being a prophet, and yet the things that they do are the vilest things that are of the world. Okay? So listen when they preach the Bible. They have studied the Bible. They can quote you Bible verses backwards and forwards, but don't do what they do because they don't live the Bible. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, 
or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his head, his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. <coughs> For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Which is why I'm constantly saying, why, why are they saying all this stuff about, about New Age, about, about um, the mystics community and the cult? God hates the practices of these communities. He doesn't hate the people. He doesn't hate the people. He hates the practices of these communities. And what should be happening, these pastors should be teaching that Christians should be going and, and preaching Jesus Christ to these people. Let these people know what Jesus has done in their life. Not tell them how, how awful they are. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 20, 46 to 47. Beware the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love greetings in the marketplace and best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feast who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. These people who are saying they are pastors, bishops, apostles, prophets, who are out here abusing people, they will receive the greater condemnation. Who are who are preaching this this uh, prosperity gospel, having people send them all their money, and uh, what's happening? These people are getting angry at God because God doesn't live by the world. God doesn't live by what these prosperity preachers are saying. They will receive the greater condemnation. Luke 7, 36 to 50. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him, at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who, had invited, who invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who, who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Do you see the condemnation in this Pharisee's thought process? Uh, of, a, of a woman who I guess they regarded as a prostitute. He didn't see her heart. He didn't see her soul. He didn't see her tears. All she saw was what the world called her. Not that she was created in the image and likeness of God. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. Romans 14, 1 to 23. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, welcome him. But do not quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. And let me tell you something. The weak person in this situation are these Pharisees. They are the weak ones. Because even the people from the mystics community and the occult, they believe very strongly in what they do and what they believe and, and these gods that they serve, which are in fact demons. They believe very strongly in it. The weak ones here are these Pharisees. They are boxed into whatever they're believing in their own mindset and they don't see people for who they truly are they're judgmental they are of the world they are in fact the weak ones 
Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Matthew 21, 31 to 32. Which of the two did the will of his father, they said. The first, Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. Talking to the Pharisees now. These are supposed to be the self-righteous religious people who sit in judgment of everybody else, who have kicked the father off the throne. They sit in judgment of everybody else. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterwards change your mind and believe him. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And Jesus only left us two commandments, as I've stated. First one is love God the Father with all your heart, with everything you have in you. Second is love your neighbor as yourself, just as much as you love God the Father. If, if, if it's impossible for you to do that, you're practicing lawlessness. Mark 10, 2-12. And Pharisees come up, and in order to test him, asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. God made them. Matthew 5.20 For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is what I've been screaming from the rooftops out here. This is what exactly what I've been screaming from the rooftops out here. These people are of the world. And Jesus will never recognize them. Ever. Any person who can gang attack another Christian. They are, they are like predators. What is the verse, the Bible verse... That the, the, the enemy roams around like a lion lion looking for someone to devour. Let's see if I can find that. First Peter 5 8 be ye sober and awake ye for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion goeth about seeking whom he shall devour here's from bible.com NIV, 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of, so, and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. This is the exact behavior of these pseudo-Christians out here. When they think a person is weak and down, down and out, this is when they attack. They're predators. They're predators. The fact that they attack in packs, in a gang... What I've been saying, they've been gang attacking me. They attack in gangs, like a pack of lions. They are, in fact, demons. 
That's all I can say about this. The, and, and the devil comes as an angel of light. And his minions come as righteous beings. Let me see if I can find that. Second, oh, Second Corinthians, we're in there. Oh, Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. But I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. You've all heard the verse. So um, this is what I have been seeing out here. This is what I have been experiencing out here. No true Christian who is of God would ever behave like this. I am totally dumbfounded by what I'm seeing out here. They have predatory behaviors. They, wrote, they, they abuse in packs. And uh, this is all demonic stuff out here, you guys. This is all demonic stuff out here. Now... To be very, very honest and open, I warned these pastors that Nithyananda was sending demons to them to attack them because I was being delivered from demons by watching their mass deliverances. I warned them about this approximately nine months ago when they started attacking me. I also warned them that Nithyananda was going was was hacking into their their um their YouTube accounts, their internet accounts, and they all attacked me even more for even saying such a thing. Um, that prophetess person actually made a video calling me a witch saying that I was trying to scare them. No, I was trying to warn them. I was trying to warn them. And now what is happening? I'm receiving robocalls with her voice on it from an Oklahoma number. I know they're hacked into her stuff. So, and this is why I made the video showing you how to see if they're hacked into your YouTube account. I can't do any more. I've tried to help everybody out here. Even these people who have been attacking me, I've been trying to help them. But uh, there's there's nothing in the Bible that says that any person of God must sit and be a victim to a pack of lions. No, I should go inside to the Holy Spirit to get the strength and to always ask God to forgive these people, to uh, give, give them uh, flesh hearts remove their hearts of stone, bind the demons that have inhabited their forms, do whatever I need to do. But uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Uh, we all fall short. That's all I can say. So the only thing that I can do is repent, repent and ask the father, help me with this. I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own. But it appears that I am the only one out here trying to get the information out to everybody. Over two to three hundred people left Nithi and Anda. Not one of them has ever reached out to me to help me. None of them. And Sarah Landry started a massive smear campaign on me, telling everybody that, that Nithi and Anda nor her even knew who I was. I was just some crazy lunatic out here attacking her, which was a ball faced smear campaign lie. And Ganga Taro did the same exact thing. I've showed you all. The fact that she posted a video calling um, calling uh, the trolls of Nithyananda, the Nithyananda porn team, she knew what they were doing. And she blamed me for it. This was all done on purpose. These are all demonic attacks. These people are inhabited by demons, especially Sarah Landry and all the people that left Nithyananda. If they have not repented and turned towards Jesus Christ yet, they're all inhabited by demons. And these demons are going to start attacking them now since they left him. They don't have any other recourse. He will try to kill them in spirit. They need to come to Jesus now. They need to come to Jesus now. Jesus is your only hope and your only protection. Nithyananda is a very powerful demon. He's a very powerful demon. And Sarah Landry can lie all she wants. But Sarah Landry has been practicing black magic for many, many years. 
uh, the, the majority of us that followed Nithyananda were actually very naive and we were out there looking for God. We cannot combat the, the, the power that Nithyananda has in the spirit realm. Only the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ can do that. You all, you all need to heed my warning and ask Jesus Christ into your life. Otherwise, you're at his mercy. That's really all I can tell you at this point. So I will put everything in the description as I always do. And I want you to understand, I, I'm, I'm really not out here browbeating these pastors. No, this is exactly what they're doing. And they are Pharisees. They are Pharisees. They don't have a kind, positive word for anybody. Except for themselves, as they all see themselves as being the anointed ones and the special ones out here. And you all really need to wake up and start paying attention to what's in front of you. Because it's not coming from the light. You'll be blessed.